Welcome to the Greater Sums site visits. Site visits allow you to visit some of the most innovative nonprofit spaces around the country. Today, you'll be joining us at the Digital Harbor Foundation. Youth have passions and creativity and purpose, but they need opportunities. Um, and so where and how do we create those, especially ones that are focused on pathways into high growth tech sector jobs, um, which require um, a, a skill set that is, uh, that is always evolving and changing. My name is Adina Moulton and I am the Senior Development Manager at the Digital Harbor Foundation. So we are a tech center and makerspace that provides technology and career readiness education to about uh, 1,200 Baltimore City youth a year. Um, and then we provide capacity building, uh, technical assistance and curriculum to um, educators and organizations that want to integrate similar programs into their own learning environments. 2012, Baltimore City was shutting down a number of its rec centers. Um, and so Andrew Coy, our founder, went to the city and said, hey, let's save the rec center. And they said, well, what would you do with it? And he said, well, I would turn it into a tech center. When I heard about this, this uh, rec center closing down, um, I talked with others. I was a classroom teacher two blocks away at the time and was saying, you know, what can we do to, to keep the rec center open? How do we, uh, you know, and some, somebody asked me, well, what would you do with it? And I told them all the different types of things that I felt like we could be doing, teaching things like 3D printing and web and app development and all sorts of skills that will put young people on pathways into high growth sector jobs that were right here in the community, um, but that they didn't have entry points uh, previous. We just really saw the need for larger spaces and places with a lot of freedom to teach these technologies. This is the site created by the youth employees here at the Digital Harbor Foundation web shop. Uh, it's for the Pigtown Main Street location. So uh, they have like events and stuff, but they usually didn't have a way to advertise it. Pigtown, it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty cool for the first job that web shop has uh, done. If you want it to fall in that pit, you'll need to make a variable for gravity, which gets a little more complicated. Uh, you might want to try to find a tutorial that goes over that if there is one. Otherwise, one of us can come around and show you how to do that. Yep. So, I mean, we started off um, at the very beginning, we walked into the space and there was nothing. They had literally just closed the doors behind them, trash in the trash cans. There was like an old piano, a, one of those old like bouncy houses. Like there was a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> um, so it was honestly like getting a space together that we felt comfortable inviting youth into um, was definitely a challenge. <laughs> we were confident it would work just because we because we saw the need for it as being so pressing and so important and we saw that like youth were hungry for this and the parents are hungry for this and the community is hungry for this we ended up um, writing all of our own content in-house um, and so that's one of the resources we provide to other um, environments because we really sought to strike the balance between providing a deep, rich, meaningful experience, but not being school, because school can be so overwhelming, depressing, like it can be a place where you feel like you aren't allowed to be creative, you aren't allowed to find like solutions to your own problems. Um, and so we work really, really hard at creating a space where youth are fully empowered. What really excites me about the Digital Harbor Foundation is how innovative it is and how how eager it is to be on the, the cusp of what's new, um, especially when it comes to how we approach teaching and learning and how we create an environment where um, youth are actually excited to be here and they're excited to learn. Um, what are you making? It makes sense. This is back in the day when they had like um the castles and they were fighting with like cattle and stuff. I like this one. 
Oh, <laughs> I think this is cool. I can see the rubber bands here and you have popsicle sticks here. And you're gonna be able to launch a pom-pom. Looks like it. That's pretty cool. Make a really good prototype so that they can be like, well, he researched it, then he prototyped it, then he actually made it. We are not using batteries in our designs today. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, I definitely want to see that when it's done. I think you you know what's going on. <laughs> Another challenge we face is um, how do we work with um, the communities that are just so systemically um, excluded from um, technology education and you know, uh, tech pathways, tech careers, tech education in general. Um, and so we've done a lot of thinking, a lot of like work around that. So that includes things like actively participating in like diversity and inclusion trainings um, and restructuring our program recruitment so that it was more inclusive. It didn't include like words and phrases that or automatic turnoffs to people who've already told themselves that they don't like technology or have been told by like society that they don't like technology or they aren't good at it. One example I really love to share um, is we have a group of all girls who are, we call our makerettes, they're like a all girl user group that meets outside of like our regular courses you know, like once or twice a month and so in 2017 maybe um, they worked on a semester long project called Be The Light where they designed um, laser cut and sold uh, lanterns to raise money for the House of Ruth, which is a local domestic violence shelter. And so they raised over $1,100 um, for the House of Ruth, sold dozens of lanterns, like well over 50. Um, and you know, in that during that period, they like met with um, leaders at the House of Ruth, learned about what. Um, domestic violence prevention looks like in, in their community and really just felt very, built lots of like really meaningful connections both ways. Um, and then once we saw that it was working in our space, okay, we have a really good idea of what effective program structures are, what effective content looks like, um, what effective space setup looks like, and we really want to start teaching um, educators and organizations on a large scale, not just in Baltimore, but um, around the country. And the greater sum like came in like at that moment and said, "We're interested. Like, we believe in your idea. We are interested in like helping you support that." And as like a national level funder, we were able to leverage the greater sum foundation and say, "They believe in us. You should too." <laughs> I knew what we were working on mattered nationally, but I don't think I had a full appreciation for just how unique some of the solution sets that that we were providing uh, had on a national stage. And, and I remember the first time uh, one of our youth was invited uh, to the White House to, to sort of present their work. Where are you from? Baltimore. Baltimore, so you're pretty close by. Yes, sir. And what grade are you in? Uh, third. You're in third grade. Jacob, it looks like you have an entire product line here. Explain to me what it is that you've been doing. Uh, and then the you know youth after that, we had two or three more that, that were invited to present. Um, and that sort of attention and saying like what you're working on uh, is a model that, that others could learn from and that could benefit from, um, you know, and, and that's led to a whole series of work that we're doing to try to support communities around the country that want to reimagine uh, physical spaces, uh, convert, um, you know, underutilized uh, portions into, uh, into tech-focused opportunities for youth in their communities. Um, and, you know, even for me personally, uh, you know, having the opportunity to work on that uh, in, a, in a couple different roles, including as a senior advisor on the tech and innovation team in the Obama White House was, was completely unexpected. And now we've, I mean, gotten about $450,000 at least in funding for like the to tech model alone, um, and we'll probably be getting like substantially more. So it's really, it's a really exciting time and we're really happy that Greater Sun was a part of that. I, I genuinely think of it as like we create the space and we provide the tools and then the youth make it their own. Um, so they are constantly coming up with new ideas, new projects, new approaches that we would never have thought of. Uh, 
we see a lot of potential that the, the seeds have been have been sown um, and now it's a matter of watching them grow and sprout and where they go from here. I would say and this is one of the biggest lessons we've learned like you you can never overestimate what youth are able to achieve as long as you give them the tools and the resources and the safe supportive environment and they just like constantly exceed your expectations. Mm -hmm.